All right. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Father Mario. Yes, so how well do you follow instructions? Do you tend to listen to your parents when they say to you, Lauren, it's time to go to bed. No? You just run? <laughs> or you read? Okay. Your sister does that. Oh, she does not listen? Tell me more. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> All right. So sometimes we just don't follow instructions well. And what happens when we don't follow instructions? Yes, Ava? You get in trouble. You get in trouble. Can you think of a time when that happened to you? Oh, yes. Yes. Do you want to share it? No? Okay. <laughs> I don't blame you. All right. So in the gospel reading today, Jesus saw someone called Philip, and he said two words, follow me. What do you think Philip did? He followed him. Yes. Now, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Go ahead, Ava. It means to follow his words. Yes. And to listen to his instructions. Can you think of some instructions that Jesus gives us? Some, uh, Yes. Alex, go ahead. Uh, yes. Yeah, Jake, go ahead. Don't say bad words and don't say anything in his name. Okay, that's very good. Go ahead, Kara. Be good and kind. Go ahead, Alex. Don't say Jesus Christ in vain. You all have been studying your Bible. Very good. Go ahead, Abby. Be respectful. Be respectful. Now let me ask you, have you been doing those things? No, no, this is not the time to be silent. You're supposed to say yes. <laughs> right? Have you been doing those things? Yes, Father. Oh, okay. We're going to save that for later. But when we follow Jesus and he gives us these instructions, do you know why he wants us to do that? Yes. Because he wants, he wants us to, be, to grow up as a good adult. Yeah. Yes, to grow up as a good adult and to help tell the world about the love of God. So he called Philip and said, follow me. And then Philip went out to this special calling and he called Nathaniel and others into God's kingdom. We are called to be in God's army, and that's why we follow Jesus, so that we too can spread love and kindness and joy to the world. But if we don't do that, what do you think might happen if we don't follow Jesus? We'll get in trouble. Well, we, we, yeah, we might get in trouble. Since we're in church, you might go to the devil. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes? You're not sure. Well, other people will not get to see Jesus Christ. And do you want others to not feel loved? No. Do you want others to not experience kindness and goodness? So it might be very important if we listen and follow the instructions of Jesus, right? Okay. Now, who's your favorite uh, TV character? Lauren? Who do you like most? You like Disney? Jesse? Your parents hate it, but you like it. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> yes, Carol? Mario. Mario! Oh, yes! You love Super Mario. I agree. <laughs> well, yes. Who's that? Mandalorian. So now, do you all listen to what Mandalorian and Jesse and Super Mario said? Do you, right? I follow Princess Peach. Yeah. You follow Princess Peach. So if you listen to them, <laughs> above their word, who should you be really following? Jesus. Jesus. And what are some things Jesus is going to call us to do this week? Be kind. Be kind right? Listen to your parents. Yes? Follow him. Follow him. All right, and yes, Jake. Follow words. Follow his words. Yes. So, can you do that? Do you think you're gonna be extra kind to your siblings this week? Yes. Lauren, no. 
Can you try? Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. All right? So follow me, says Jesus. And I want us to be great followers of God. Can we do that? Yes. All right, stand up. Jesus said, Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. Will you join us? Will you join us in following Christ? In following Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. <laughs> When Ava said that if you don't follow Jesus, you go straight to the devil, she reminds me of my grandmother. Behave, or you get a one-way ticket straight to hell. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. I wonder, Phyllis, is there are times in life when God seems absent to you, at least in ways we desire. Have you ever had that experience? I suspect that I'm not alone. Where in life, if at all, do we feel the absence of God? And in what ways do we long to see and feel God's presence? If you've ever wrestled or struggled with seeing God's hand in day-to-day -day life, then perhaps you understand and have a keen sense of what is happening in the reading from 1 Samuel, from which our text is taken. It is the story of the call of the boy Samuel. Now, when God called Samuel, Nikki, it was not a good time for God's people. It was a time of spiritual drought and despair. A time, as the reading points out, when the word of God was rare and visions were not widespread. People did not seek God, nor did they hear or see much from God. We are also told that Eli, who was the temple priest, had dim eyesight. Perhaps it was a metaphor for his lack of spiritual vision, his lack of leadership, and certainly it was an indication that he had turned a blind eye to the corruption of his sons. It was a time full of turmoil and violence and blatant corruption and confusion. The book of Judges describes it this way. In those days, there was no king in Israel and each person did whatever they choose. Things were ugly. And yet it is in this context that God calls a little boy named Samuel. Have you ever been called by God into an ugly and messy situation? As a teacher, have you ever had to deal with that Beth? I'm sure you did. But Samuel, once he knew that it was God who was calling him, here's what he said. Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. What might our response be? What might our response be if God is calling us in such a time as this? If you read the news articles and you're up to date with what's happening in the church worldwide over the past 20 years, 60 million Americans have strayed away from Christianity. In times of spiritual desolation, and as we wrestle with church decline the world across, a time when many people may not be interested in Christian ideology or thought, I believe the call of Samuel speaks powerfully to us. How do we respond in the midst of spiritual desolation when God seems absent from our lives, when the church is struggling? The passage seems to suggest three specific actions amongst others. First, we listen. We listen. When God seems distant, and when we lack spiritual fervor, we are called to listen. The story calls us like Samuel to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 
in a time when there are so many competing voices and distractions that are drawing people away from God, we are called to listen to what God is telling us. We are called to listen with open hearts to discern what God is bringing down and lifting up to embrace God's movement. As Eli even experienced, we are called to listen sometimes to the hard truth. You know about one of those conversations where somebody said to you, we need to talk. You had one of those this week, hey Luke. Probably. <laughs> it happens. We know that it's something serious. Eli had to listen to some hard truths from God. And maybe as we wrestle with the state of the church, we need to listen to some hard truths as well. That maybe we have been spiritually blind like Eli and in some ways, God is calling us to wake up because God wants to do a new thing. In moments of hardship, are we open to hearing what God is saying to us? Whenever, you know, couples have a hard time in my practice and they struggle to listen to each other, I invite them to pause and to repeat intentionally what they heard the other person say. When they are able to listen they can resolve more often than not their situations amicably and peacefully regardless of the outcome. And so what's the advice? Melissa should listen to me, right? <laughs> no. Of course, Jay, I'm, I, of course. I said it when she's not here, right? <laughs> but the reality is, what I'm saying is, if we are going to bring healing to our world, if we're going to help transform our community, if we're going to get through this spiritual desert that we are currently working through as a church, we're going to have to listen. Where in our lives do we need to listen to God a bit more? Where in our lives do we need to spend more time throughout the day listening to God? What's getting in the way of us listening to God? What's creating a barrier between us and God? For Eli and his sons, it was corruption. For Samuel, it was spiritual immaturity. What is it for you? What is it for me? May we spend some time this week intentionally listening to God. So listen. Second, in times of spiritual desert, we walk in hope. We cling to hope. The hope that God never, ever gives up on us. See, we're not meant to miss the fact if we listen to the reading that the lamp of God, in spite of corruption, had not yet completely gone out. With God, there is always possibility. True, Eli had basically given up, but God's promises are kept alive in Samuel. Mike, do you know the meaning of your name? He who is of God. He who is of God. It's very similar to... The meaning of Samuel. Yeah, Michael. Are you surprised? Are you suggesting that your dad is not of God? We're not going to talk about that today. He did laugh. I know. See me after church. No. <laughs> Samuel means basically God heard. God heard. See? And so despite the fact that things were dim and there was spiritual corruption, God heard. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. It means that there is still hope for God. God never, ever gives up on us. Who needs to hear that today? God has not given up on you. God has not given up on me. The story of Samuel's call is balm for a hurting church. It's balm for aching souls. No weapon formed against us, says Paul. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. What does that do for you, for your heart, for your spirit, for your conscience this morning? What does it mean that God does not give up on us? Here's what it means, as I'm glad you asked. It means this, that when we are down to nothing, God is up to something. That when our backs are against the wall, God always has an answer. God is able to bring ex nihilo order out of chaos. It means, dear friends, that we should never ever completely write people off because God does not give up on us. 
It means that you and I can look ahead at the church's future with possibility and optimism because the best days of the church are not behind us. No, they are ahead of us. No, this means that we should not be living in nostalgia. We should be living in hope. We should not be abiding by the seven last words of the church. We never did it that way before. But rather, this is good news. That God is about to do something new because God never ever gives up on us. In the words of Jason Bias, God's people cannot be known for nostalgia. We should be known for our hope. In what ways, dear friends, do we need to offer more hope than nostalgia about the church of today? Who needs us to offer a little more hope? In moments of spiritual despair, we cling to hope. And finally, in moments of spiritual despair, we offer courageous discipleship and we live with character. We live with character and courage. Have you ever noticed how much courage and character is a part of this text? For no matter how much it hurt Eli, no matter how hard it was for him to hear or how irrelevant it made him, he encouraged Samuel to listen to God and to speak God's truth to him. Can we handle the truth? Nothing but the truth, the whole truth. It's hard sometimes to hear the truth. But Samuel spoke truth, and Eli heard truth, and he was prepared. See, there's one thing that we can always do, even when we mess up, that can get us through. It is to speak truth and listen to truth. My mom used to say, I'd rather you tell me the truth, no matter how hard it is, than to lie to me. Honesty is still the best policy, huh? And so, in moments of spiritual desolation, we offer courage and truth. What might that look like for you in your current context? An apology to someone? Asking for forgiveness? Speaking truth when it's hard? May we never ever be afraid to act courageously and speak God's truth, no matter how ugly or challenging the context. William Coffin said this, the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So I invite us, dear friends, to reflect this week. If God's word is rare in our society today, is it because we have failed to listen? We have failed to offer hope or we have failed to offer courageous discipleship? On this weekend, when we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King, one who spoke truth and love into ugliness at times, may we be encouraged to do the same so that God's presence may be felt more and more, even as the fabric of our society seems to be tearing apart. See, I have a dream that all of us will listen more to God, will hold up hope in times of spiritual desolation, and will offer courageous discipleship. I have a dream that all of us in our church today will say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. Let us stand now and reaffirm our faith, our hope, in the God we serve. Page 358, the Nicene Creed, 358. Together, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
the God and not faith, but the one being with the Father, who in him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today are Form 6, found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice and freedom and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Carrie, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in the Church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for safety for Rowan Walsh, Alex Reeves, and all those in our armed forces. Please add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and we praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear family, having made peace with God, let us share in peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> yeah, I came from Hanover. I got travel around. I have a question about the donation that happened to me. So, is it like, is it for the like so let's talk about that after. Yes. No, I just have like, so like, does it have to be like if I want to 
Good morning, church. Good morning, morning priest. Joy to welcome all of you here this morning. Thank God for your presence and pray for God's continued blessings upon each and every one of you. I want to welcome those who are visiting with us this morning. And in typical St. George's fashion, we ask, simply stand and say who you are so that we can warmly welcome you. All right? And so, do you mind introducing yourself? I'm uh, Logan Plasman. I go out and minister the word to people and hand out gospel tracts. That's basically what I do. Awesome. Well, welcome, Logan. Oh. We have two visitors uh, from the Diocese of Pennsylvania uh, here with us this morning. My name is Sarah. All right, let's welcome. May God bless you. We pray that you are strengthened through your worship with us and spiritually edified. I want to extend birthday greetings to those celebrating birthdays this week. Uh, Keenan, you're going to get a double dose, right? Yeah, you weren't supposed to be here, but you're here. And Tyler, going on to what? Fifth, oh my gosh. Fifteen, right? Remember those days you were running around your house in pajamas, opening your Christmas gift on Christmas Eve? Now you're 15 years old. I can't believe it. <laughs> and Kaylee, how old are you going to be, Kaylee? Eleven. All right. Yes, I know. It's creeping up into the screen ages. Yes. Right. Yes. So we're going to sing happy birthday um, and we're going to rely on Debbie to give us a good key. Right, Debbie? Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> May God bless each and every one of you. Anyone celebrating anniversaries this week? No. Okay, so I want to thank Hannah for her uh, instrumental and who has agreed to offer that um, over the next two weeks, at least today and next week. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, give her a round of applause, please. Do you, have a, do you have another piece that you can play? All right, so during communion, before we actually sing, please feel free to offer it up, okay? The offer, we'll, we'll sing a hymn, and then we'll do a play then. Okay? Um, Vestry Vitality Day. Vestry Vitality Day. It's not just for Vestry members. It's for leaders of the church. We're looking for people to sign up. It is diocesan-wide. And guess what? St. George's has been signed up as a hot spot. So other people from the churches throughout the diocese will also come to us. Now, we can't let them come to us and only the priest and the vestry members are here, right? That would not give us a good name. And so please sign up. An email was sent to us. This is talking about congregational vitality. It is talking about gifts in the church and how we can move forward as a church as well as the diocese. So please uh, here if you are able to, we look forward to your presence. The annual general meeting in a couple weeks, January 28th. All reports are due today, right? And I was told that if your report is not in, please see Principal Robin. All right, and so all your reports are due today so that we could uh, uh, put the book together and, of course, send it out for the congregation to read. We are in need of one more vestry member. Please, uh, if anyone is looking to serve in a new way, right, so that you don't leave me to volunteer you um, for vestry, um, I look forward to your presence and your offering. And finally, our stewardship update. We know that for pledges, we have a certain pledge goal that we want and we're still shy and we have often and we've been given a grant challenge. Right now we have $11,300 given to Warden, right? And so we need another 18700 to uh, reach our goal. 
the grand challenge goes through to March and whatever <laughs> is given, that's how much will be matched. What's not given will be retracted. And so let's not miss out on this opportunity for $30,000 injected into our mm -hmm. budget. And so for those who have given toward that, I greatly appreciate it. And for those who haven't, may God move your heart and your pocket. All right. Um, I see the save the date for our sixth annual bingo is never too early. April 27th. You would have received a calendar for the year. Please mark those dates. For Shrove Tuesday, believe it or not, Lent will begin in a matter of four weeks. Right? Four weeks. And so for Shrove Tuesday, we have our pancake supper. And we are inviting people who uh, normally come to the food pantries, NISAP, etc., to join us that evening, right? And so we would need individuals to help serve. And then during Lent, uh, we are going to offer for our Lenten program every Wednesday for an hour, hour and a half. Mental health professionals will be coming in and speaking to us on parenting, marriage and relationships, addictions, depression, and anxiety, and then a general overview of how to cope with stress and mental health challenges. Our own Dan Young will kick it off for us. Dan there, wonderful therapist. Um, if you have anyone, um, you can refer to Dan, um, but Dan will join us. And then finally today, after the service, having met with the choir last week, um, with all of our children, we can gather into the uh, Sunday school room, and Dan and I would sit with you, and uh, we will be with you as we process the loss of our beloved Ralph Martin. I um, leave and try to, at least over the next several weeks, share one, you know, delightful story I have about Ralph, and so. Ralph was a person of time. If the service started at 9, Ralph is here at 8, right? And so sometimes when we would meet in our monthly meetings, Ralph would say, and say, oh my gosh, sometimes, Ralph, you know, I don't want to shave and all of that. And Ralph has a way of letting you know um, what he wants to be heard in a very diplomatic way. Right? And sometimes I might show up on um, Caribbean time as opposed to Ralph's time. <laughs> and Ralph would say, you know, that's why I prepare everything the night before so that I don't have to worry about anything in the morning. I said, did Ralph just throw shade at me? <laughs> Telling me to show up on time? But that was Ralph, right? He would let himself be known. And of course, we continue to miss him and honor him and pray that he will rest in peace and rise in glory. With that said, may you all have a wonderful week. Let us continue to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. The hymn, Here I Am, Lord, number 69.
Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks for grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. paying attention. <laughs> Let's try that again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance of Christ who died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. just as I am.
prayer on page 365. 365. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, enough time to gladden the hearts of those around us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and proclaim the gospel at all times. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. to Shirley Freeland, Sonny and Shirley, 
on the loss of Shirley's brother, who died a couple weeks ago. Upon his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, may he rest in peace. And then finally, a blessing for this threshold donated to us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask your blessing and anointing upon this pressure, that all those who use it may feel your presence, may dispel their fears, and may give them courage. May, it envelop, may they be enveloped by your love and your peace. May you grant them righteousness and lead them beside still waters all the days of their life. These blessings we ask. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise to God. Alleluia, alleluia.